so today what we're going to work on is um, let's say we have an imagined legacy web application it'd be just like a like a monolithic web application that's running on a machine you know maybe a VM somewhere or something like that and we want to bring it into Amazon cloud um, but we're not prepared to do docker and all that right we just basically need to kind of Imagine that you know we need to create a machine just like we would do like a like a virtual machine, and so the technology we're going to use there is EC2, and along the way we'll explore some related technologies like auto scaling groups and a bastion host. So um, this diagram kind of represents the final state of what will end up happening, and the things with the, the arrows on them are the new items. So there's four broadly four new items. Um, so first of all is um, let's focus on LB legacy and web legacy. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin up a, a one per availability zone, right? We're going to spin up a web application running on a EC2 instance inside of a new a security group, right? And then to support that we're going to set up a load balancer legacy Right, that's just like we did with the web, the other one. Um, we have a load balancer that's going to drive um, the front end, the web legacy instances, right? And uh, I think I mentioned it, but there's an auto scaling group managing the three uh, instances of web legacy. Uh, and then, since these are EC2 instances, we we're going to probably need to think about managing them at some level. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a bastion host, which is, allows us to road in. Uh, securely to the public network and then bounce off of it into the private networks, right? And um, we have a security group around that. So uh, that's what, and so in order to support that, we had to update the end the network. Since we're going to reuse the same public and private subnets, right? Um, we had to add uh, the ability for inbound for port 22 um, on this private subnet, right? Allow anything from port 22 to come in. And um, what else we had to do? We also had to, that was one thing we had to change. And then, then we had to add, right? So these are the three ads. We have a, a security group for legacy, a load balancer, we have a web legacy um, security group, and now we have a bastion security group. So those are the main items that we're going to kind of flush out here. So that's sort of the end, end state. Um, the next thing we want to talk about, oh, just real quick before I continue, just to save money and the config, you'll notice I've reduce the number of instances of the web of the EC, ECS tasks to one just because I didn't want to keep on paying for it um, so I'm just I just reduced that to one for now okay um, the next thing I did I still did this outside of I did one I'm trying to do more and more inside of Terraform one thing I did outside of Terraform was create this certificate partially because it includes a manual step and I couldn't think of a better way of doing it for now, so I just still did it manually. That is, I created the legacy.todosorus.com, which um, will be kind of a, the, the address we'll use for our legacy page. Um, did that. Um, the, another thing I did, um, which wasn't terribly automated at the moment, but I probably will look at automating it more. But the, the idea is I need to create a new AMI image that will serve as the source for all of my um, ECS, EC2 instances, right? And the, there's a technology called Packer, which is also made by the same company that makes Terraform, um, or supports it, I guess is the right term. Um, they, they have a thing called, called Packer. I'll, I'll kind of briefly talk about it through example. Basically, it, basically it kind of scripts the, your ability, you can basically create AMI images through scripts, basically, I think is the easiest way of describing it. So I think that's the first thing we're going to look at in terms of like code. And of course, all the code is linked in the article itself. Um, let's go out of here. Don't need certificate manager. I don't think I need this. Right, don't need any of this right now. Okay, so um, what I opened up was right now just called example JSON because this was my first attempt at Packer, right? Um, and I just used our basic example. And generally what it's doing is um, 
it is using a Amazon EBS type builder, which is going to basically build an AMI image, right? And it, you, know, you pass it security keys. You basically find a base image that it's going to use and basically output like the name of your AMI. So this is kind of, but the, the real key is, is that once you have a builder set in place, you can now run a provisioner on top of it, right? In this case, I'm basically running uh, on top of this builder here. It's going to set this up, and then it's going to provision it. And what is it going to do? It's going to it's an update the instance. It's an upgrade the instance. It's install Apache, enable Apache. I copy hello, uh, basically a very simple HTML file into the temp folder, and then I run a command to copy that t uh, file from the temp folder into the public website. Right now, just one quick thing. Uh, if you read the docs, this copy command cannot copy to folders that the um, like kind of a, a non-privileged user can't. Like if the, you can't copy files into privileged folders, basically. Um, so you have basically have to copy into a temp folder first, and then run a command with sudo to then do your execution of copying the file. So that was one little oddity. So this basically the end result of this, and I just closed the window, but uh, I create a new. I, a new image AMI that then I will reference in my um, Terraform configuration. Okay, so that's Packer and building the AMI image done outside of Terraform. Now let's look at the Terraform configuration. So um, to do's are us dash net. Um, the only real change here, uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, in this file, it might be right here actually. Yeah, actually, I just found it right here. So, one of the things I had to change, remember the diagram, the network ACL, right? The, uh, the <coughs> basically the what? network ACL private, um, right? I need to allow port 22 in from anywhere within sort of internally. So, that's what this is right here. So, protocol TCP allow from the CIDR block of the VPC. Okay, that was the only change here. That was a pretty easy change. And I applied that, right? Uh, and then more changes, however, in to do's are us app. So I've had to, sometimes it's hard for me to remember what I all change. Okay, so I added two new modules, one called EC2, which is basically what the legacy stuff is. And Bastion, right? Um, again, I, I named these based on technologies, most because this is learning. This probably should have been named Legacy if we were thinking about this for real. I mean, this is kind of a hybrid project, right? It's partially learning and it's partially trying to learn about how to do things the right way. So I don't like naming things based on the service, but rather the function. But it's a side note. Um, okay, so the first change here was in Bastion. I'll just kind of skim it. Um, it basically, uh, oh, I don't know why I have this. I, I, I had split things apart, so this certificate, I'll have to remove it later, but this certificate should not, won't be here. I don't think there's a reason for the bastion to have the legacy certificate, I'm pretty sure. So that's, that's garbage. The public matters because I need to basically put the bastion host in the public subnet, right? Um, this is the version of uh, the host we're going to use Ubuntu 18, and we'll talk about more in a later video about Bastion hosts and securing them. For now, we're just going to get up and running. Um, here's the security groups for the Bastion host, and then this is spinning up the actual instance. And the only trickiness here is um, right now I'm just putting the Bastion host in the first public ID it finds, so what a public subnet it finds, so that's why it's at zero. Okay. So uh, that's that. I gotta remember to fix that. Let me fix the note here. Note, fix, bastion. Okay. Um, the EC2, there's a little bit more going on here. Um, this one does, starts off with a certificate because we're gonna serve that user certificate. It's very similar to the ECS in the sense that it has, it's all its subnets, has its security groups, it has its load balancer, its target group. Uh, one change here, by the way, I've noticed this. 
Here we actually have an instance type instead of an IP type. That was something I caught when I was doing this. Um, this is all pretty standard stuff. And then the new stuff really is the launch template and the auto scaling group. So the launch template, um, again, I just had to read about it and uh, set the launch template. Basically, it picks its image. It's, you know, kind of the things that are very specific to the individual instance, right? Not so much about where they're placed, but more about what they are, right? Uh, what security group wraps them, their name, whatnot. And then the auto scaling group is what's picking what subnets they're going to go in and how many of them and things like that. Right. So um, that's kind of how that broke it breaks apart, right? So those are that code. Okay. Um, and then the last thing is I wanted to cover was one bit of trickiness uh, about how you actually use the Bastion host, right? So that's what we're going to cover. I'm going to pause the video and queue this up. I want to show you some documentation that I got to find. So there's an article, and I'll, this will be in the story too linked. Um, it's called Securely Connect to Linux Instances Running in a Private Amazon VPC. And this talks about how you're supposed to, you know, connect to your private instances or instances in a private subnet through a bastion host appropriately, right? And the first time you try to go to do this, by the way, you'll You'll, you'll get into your Bastion host, and then you'll think, oh, I need to copy the um, PEM file onto the Bastion host, and, and it's in here saying, whatever you do, don't do that, right? So I'll just kind of, the article's here. I'll just show you how I did it, essentially. So the first thing you need to do is you have your PEM file that you have to get into your, you know, your Bastion host, which happens to be the same PEM file that's used to get into your uh, private instances. And you use a command called secure shell add, Right? And they have instructions here specifically. And you basically add it to your, uh, it's called your, like, I think it, I don't know what the right term is, but it's like a keychain um, for this, something called secure shell agent, which is kind of a running process that keeps track of things. So it, that will, provides basically keys for the secure shell command. And if I do a minus L here, I can list that I have a number of, of, um, I'll close this out. I have a number of, of um, keys already added. S some of these are my development keys, right? But this bottom one is the one I added, which was my, um, my PEM key, right? So what now it happens is if I run now secure shell um, to, well, I'll just do it without the A first. If I run secure shell to my, my uh, I don't have to provide the PEM file because it's going to come from the agent, right? So that, that's one of the points. Another point of this is if you put a minus A, this is like a pass-through mode. I think capital, oops, capital A stands for agent. So I'll just put minus, um, wait, where is it? there's that. So put a minus A probably at the, at the end of it. Um, that runs in agent mode. And what that means now is, um, in fact, probably talks about it here, but I don't know if it does or not, but it probably doesn't. Um, what happens now is I can now secure shell um, into other machines and I can get onto it. Now I'm onto my private ones and the PEM file actually came all the way back from my machine. So it passes through that PEM file through, um, basically through the, through the, all the way back to my machine, picks up the PEM file and that's how it got onto it. So that way I don't have to store. So if I noticed here, I didn't use a PEM file here, no PEM file here. So that was um, a bit of things, that, one of the things I learned through this exercise. Um, and that is the end of this video. And we'll move the next one into probably securing this uh, Bastion file, uh, Bastion host a little bit more in the next video.